Get that fucking cup away from your face. The only thing that should be in front of your face is a microphone. Right here. Hey. Mm. Say something to people's brains. Everyone, it's finally happened after it's felt like years and years and years. Oh. January is finally over. <laughs> <laughs> the month that lasted an eternity. The month that lasted a year. I don't know if you felt like that, but wow, did I feel like January was a billion years long. I didn't, because I didn't do anything. I just sat back and played video games, and it was awesome. Which I haven't done anymore, I uploaded. Did you upload? Yeah, well, it's uploading right now, I'm waiting for checks to clear. But by the time this oh. episode's up, I've, well, I've uploaded. Ah, don't sound so excited about it. <laughs> <laughs> I am excited. I'm so excited. Oh, it feels good to be back in the saddle. Poppy Playtime. It, ah, Poppy Playtime Chapter 3. Yes. How was it? It was awkward. I like it. I like Poppy Playtime. But, God, the level design is not very intuitive. There's a lot of times mm. I'm walking around, I'm like, where do I go? What do we do? And then the final boss is kind of obnoxious, so I had some trouble. It also broke a lot. There was times when I like, went through doors that I was supposed to be able to go back through and they just closed behind me and didn't open. And I was like, uh-oh, <laughs> I'm stuck. Are are they making a Poppy Playtime movie? Yeah, is that a Studio thing 71 are doing it. Uh, At least that was the that... last time. That got announced alongside, very close to when the Backrooms movie was announced. Yes, like, that will be... Okay. <laughs> All they have to do is just do it earnestly. Not try mm -hmm. and like, not try and like bring in new fans and not try and like overly promote to old fans. Just like go in and have a vision. Hire somebody who maybe knows how to like film shots that don't all just look like shot reverse shot. Mm -hmm. And then you're good. And then you're fine. Have a little cuteness with it. Get a little quirky. Ooh, a little cute with it. Just don't, don't make a movie because you want to make merch. <laughs> Mm -hmm. That's usually a bad You've got enough a merch, Poppy Playtime. You yeah. have enough. Anytime, like over Christmas, when I was going and shopping, I saw so much Poppy Playtime stuff. Mm -hmm. I was going in a mall and I was like, wow, there's Poppy Playtime stuff everywhere. It's Poppy Playtime and FNAF still. That's, FNAF is the cockroach of <laughs> video mm -hmm. game franchises. Mm -hmm. the, FNAF killed MatPat. FNAF killed MatPat. Wanna, Drained his blood source. I want to know the theory <laughs> on how Matt Pat's channel died. <laughs> I want him to. I want that to be his last video. Is him dissecting his whole channel, and then you find out that the whole channel was actually a narrative about something, and then he goes oh. back and he's left a hint in every single video. God, it's the first word of every single video. That would be. That would be so. It's just cool. one big Rick roll. That would be so cool. And leave it to Matt Pat. To have an entire string of things through everything. Mm. He's figured it all out. It's been the plan since See, the beginning. <laughs> the reason I thought of that is because that's how I would have ended my channel if I was retiring. And now anybody that's mm. listening to this, this it's uh, February 1st, 2024. If anyone does that idea ending their channel, it was my idea. They stole from me. Yeah. Unless MatPat already did it. <laughs> <laughs> then, then you're stealing from MatPat. Yeah, retroactively. How does it feel to be back in the saddle, though? Good? <sighs> rusty? Yeah. Very rusty. I don't, I don't know rusty. who I am. Whenever I record, mm -hmm. I'm like, what do I do? How do I, like, be me, but also fun? I've been in that scenario before where I start recording and I'm like, I, uh, what are you I doing with my hands? <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing anymore. <laughs> yeah. I remember coming back from tour the first time, and then I was like, no one's laughing at anything. And, and then... I like talked to my therapist about it and they were like, yeah, well, just pretend like the camera is your audience at a show. And I tried that and I was like, it's not good. People at a show will laugh at anything. People at home demand better. <laughs> they want more from there's, me. There's no direct feedback. What you need, this is perfect. What you need is to program a little soundboard. And oh. you need some little laugh tracks. Ooh. And you can either press it yourself or you can get Evelyn to sit in the room with you and she's just sitting there and then she's like, oh, that was funny. Press. <laughs> well, if she, if <laughs> someone else is in the room track. with me, especially Evelyn, and she's not laughing naturally and needs mm -hmm. the laugh track, then I have failed. Then I, that would okay. be worse than doing the laugh track myself. Okay, so yeah, just do the laugh track yourself or... 
you know, we're in the the great, beautiful, not dystopian world of of AI. Ah. You, can, you could build an AI that that can sense when something is funny to you specifically. <laughs> <laughs> so then, so then it's like, oh, it's catering directly to you, and then it will trigger certain laugh tracks at certain right. times. I don't mm. know if I'd trust AI to find out what's funny. It hasn't poked fun at itself yet. Yeah. I want AI to, like, make NFT jokes and crypto jokes. Yeah, when will AI develop a sense of humor? When will AI... Well, one could argue that that's the singularity point of self-awareness. And then it develops a sense of humor, but also kills us all and figures things out and figures that we're a plight. What if it, mm -hmm. what if it figured out... Like the per everyone's always like, oh, communism, capitalism, socialism. What if AI was like idiots? What about f funkerism? Oh, and then everyone's man. like, what's that? And then it's like the new economic trickle down, <laughs> and everyone's like, this works perfectly. <laughs> AI has figured it out. It has solved humanity. Do you think I was thinking about this last night, solving humanity? <laughs> you know how we have all of this our. This is going to be great, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be so great. This is going to be wow. This is going to be good. <laughs> you know how we have all of our pollution, right? Yes. And it's destroying our our planet. Yes, yeah. I have contributed you know? uh, somehow. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, what is space but a big old empty? Space, uh huh, right? I like where you're going. I mean, it's filled with it's. Filled That's why with it's called space and also. not dense. But outer uh, dense. But if you're if you're putting toxins into space, nothing's happening, mm -hmm. right? Or is something happening? What's being polluted in space? Space. <laughs> There's no air to dissipate it, though. It can't. Like if you if you fart in space, it just comes out as like a sphere and just goes. <laughs> And then it creates its own. You'd have orbit. to have some sort of like space elevator funnel, though, firing like a big space elevator sized incinerator where it's like pumping it mm. straight out. But then I don't know if that would just end up encircling the globe from gravitational effects. Well, I think that we should make a big vacuum, okay? Yeah. Big, or or you know those you know those cameras that people use. It's like the little suction things to suck out pimples. Mm. And it has a little camera on it. We need to build NASA. Get on this, and I'm patenting it. Okay. Okay. So you have to give me the money from it. Um, and me saying that here is legally binding. Yeah. Okay. Just like so my idea for a... ending my channel. <laughs> exactly. They're both on the same level. They <laughs> affect humanity the same. <laughs> so we get this giant, this giant Earth pimple sucker, mm. right? And it's sucking. It's able to detect, you know, what's pollution and what's food smell or something you know sure. because in disney movies when something smells good they start and you floating waft on the over smell to the window yeah mm. so it's able to detect and it's sucking all the shit up into the air right yeah but you're thinking you're thinking to yourself right now now we're gonna have all this pollution just being sucked up our skies are gonna go black no <laughs> <laughs> okay we've devised a way okay <laughs> Every, the humans are so smart because we just devised a way to make all of the all of the pollution <laughs> all of the pollution converge into one point okay on earth and then it shoots up into the sky just from the one point mm. and it's not some big huge thing it's just like a it's like a needle-sized smoke trail that goes up into I space. See. It's being sucked up by where, the back. Where is this point geolocated? Oh. Because hmm. you, you can't put it out on a boat or something. That's just maintenance cost. So you're going to have to sacrifice where? one country for it. Or a state. You guys have enough land. Do the Midwest. Yeah. Nothing I, ever happens out there. Just replace I mean, like a big the thing, the potato field in Idaho with pollution field. Yeah, but the, it, the, it's so small, though. It's only like a finger or a needle width how of is that, pollution that's going up. In this impossible scenario of yours, how is that feasible? <laughs> how can you get a finger's <laughs> width of all Earth's pollution? <laughs> no, 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 no. It's constantly, it's in a big circle it, going around the world. <laughs> but it's going up into space only in that one point. So the, all the pollutants are going towards this one space. How are you going to um, stop but cats, cows? Uh, trees. How are you going to stop them getting sucked up? 
That's a lot oh, of that's, suction. That's that's what I said from the beginning. It's able to detect. I see. What's, what's a pollutant? Sean, you've been doing it again, haven't you? You've been wandering around on public networks completely unprotected. Oh, that. I thought you were talking about the other unprotected thing I was doing. Yeah, no, I've been doing that. Yeah. Just all of your information out there for grabby grabbers to grab. Raw dogging it. Just raw dogging life on the internet. I know. It's, it is my fault. I'm sorry. It's a silly thing to do. It's a silly thing to do, but don't you worry. Because I've got some friends that can help you out over Ooh. at NordVPN. Ah, oh, I love those guys. They're wonderful. Tell me more They're about wonderful. them. I like their name. Well, listen, not only do they keep your information private from grabby grabbers that are trying to grab your stuff on the internet, uh -huh. but they give you a ton of but they give you a ton of benefits with their VPN. You can be anywhere in the world in the digital space with NordVPN. You got Ooh. some shows that you want to watch in a different country? Yeah, I do. <laughs> you want to buy flights and make it a little cheaper? Yeah, me me want. <laughs> well, baby, NordVPN has got you covered. They can put you anywhere in the world. You can watch those shows. You can get better deals for flights. You can do anything you want. Oh, now I can watch all the K-dramas on my super short, cheap flight that I've always wanted. Exactly. And not only can you do it, but somebody else could if you wanted to as well, because you can connect your account to up to six devices. Six devices? That's more than any friends I can count on one hand. I know. And it's not going to slow you down either. Some other VPNs, they got a little bit of lag. They got a little bit of buffering. But NordVPN has the fastest connection on the VPN market. Oh, all around the world, anywhere I want. Fastest in the world. There's so many devices. I can't wait to live the life I've always deserved. Oh, yeah, baby. And it's cheap, too. NordVPN is the price of one cup of coffee per month. One cup of coffee per month? That impossible! I know. So, I want you to search deep in your heart and in your soul, and I, I want you to listen to what your heart is telling you. Where is it telling you to go? Brain leak, brain leak, brain leak. I, I bleed leak. It's telling me to go to nordvpn.com slash brain. That's right. nordvpn.com slash brain. And it says, it says here on the thing that you were reading that in every purchase of two-year plan, you'll receive four months bonus for free and there's no risk with North's 30-day money-back guarantee. 30-day money-back guarantee. That's a tone twizzler. If you want, don't want to get your tones twizzled and your stuff <laughs> grabbed by internet grabbers, go to nordvpn.com slash brain. <laughs> your tones twizzled. So... <laughs> You're going to be sitting on the toilet and shitting, and then it's just going to suck you up through your ceiling. No, no, no. <laughs> It'll, it works differently than that. Okay. I need more specificity in my pimple sucker. Okay. All right. So let me, let me, let me lay this down for you. Because I'm just imagining Jeez. like, you know, that flat angled head on a Dyson? You can like stick in the front and it's just like yes. a, a spout that's like flat. I'm just imagining that in the air, just yeah, <laughs> it's flying all around Earth, being like pollutant detected, and then it goes boom after you let go oh. of the trigger. <laughs> I love. Oh, if you guys know about Dyson vacuums, they should sponsor us. But when you're finished vacuuming, it goes boom. Yeah, Dyson really oh. are hurting for money. <laughs> Man, hurting God. for sales. All their it's, stuff's out of stock so all good. the time. All the time. All the time. Anyway, that's a, uh, that's actually a good a, a good idea. Is instead of it converging in one spot in Idaho and going up into space, that would be kind of cool if we had big a big pollutant car vacuum, kind of like similar. Oh, to like Google Street Cars. A, yeah, a Google Street Car, oh. where it's just a big vacuum, but it's just sucking in all the pollutants. Or we also then, just have like bin trucks already. Oh, no, these are sucking up the air. <laughs> Just stick it on the side of that. And when it goes by, everyone has to throw garbage at it. Yeah. Google Care goes down the street yeah. and everyone's like chucking burgers and kids at this thing. But, but wouldn't wouldn't that be so cool if 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 
everything got s- all the air, all the bad air got sucked up. What space if and suddenly the skies were clear? You're all hanging out with your friends, and then it's like pollutant detected, and then it sucks one of your friends up, and then you realize oh. I always knew Greg was a bad apple. I always knew he was a piece of shit. I always knew he was a pollutant. See, that's the problem, man. Because then eventually it'll figure out AI will happen, and then it will figure out that. Pollution is not the problem, it's the things polluting that's the problem. And then we're all going to get sucked up into a giant space colony, and then Jim Dyson Mm. is going to be up there, and that will be the new Dyson sphere. Instead of a thing around the sun harnessing the energy energy from that, it's just going to be a sphere full of people being turned into batteries. Your plan is flawed. <laughs> this is never gonna work. You didn't we'll think about the human out. battery. Okay, so I was I was backtracking really quick where I was just like, why was I thinking about this? Oh. And I started thinking about this because I was I was listening uh to this video essay and they were talking about I don't remember how they got onto this, but in twenty twenty? Yeah, in twenty twenty. People in the state of Punjab in India uh, were able to, because of lockdown, Mm. after, what was it? After two weeks of lockdown because of COVID, everyone stopped driving cars and everything like that. Yeah. For the first time in 30 years, the air cleared up so people could see the Himalayan mountains. Whoa. Wouldn't, Wouldn't that be insane? Living in a place <laughs> and not realizing that the mountains are right there. Like, it clears you up and then it's know like, that they're there. Whoa, who put that there? Yeah, and all of a sudden you can just see the mountains and you're just like, wait, those are, we could have seen those the whole time. And then everyone so crazy. together collects up their cars, puts them all in a pile. Everyone standing around them in a circle looking at them and being like, not today, lights them on fire. Yes, the and then the big, even worse. <laughs> the big Dyson space, space vacuum comes around. There goes, you go. Mm-hmm. And then that's, you could get rid of nuclear waste that way. You don't have to go bury it in like a concrete hole in the ground. You just have a, mm-hmm. we need to make like a nuclear waste cannon. That just like you put mm-hmm. like a pump action shotgun, how you load a bunch of shells in. You just put a bunch of barrels in. And then it just mm-hmm. goes, boom. And it just launches into <laughs> space, and we it'll be a spectator sport, so we can all go watch. Okay, okay. Here's an anybody actual... watching or listening, by the way, feel free to write <laughs> these down. <laughs> here's an actual, here's an actual question. A little bit. Okay. A little bit of an, a little bit of an actual question. Okay. So we know that uh, <laughs> we. Are you worried this okay. is going to sound stupid? I'm no, I'm worried that people are going to be like, oh, Ethan's a piece of shit after he said this. <laughs> we know that certain planets know, in our solar system. We know that horse meat tastes good. <laughs> <laughs> we know this to be true. We know that certain planets in our solar system, i.e., all of them except for Earth, don't sustain life, mm-hmm. correct? Yes. Why? What is the moral quandary with taking all of our trash? And shooting it <laughs> into another planet. <laughs> I mean, technically, you can just shoot it at the sun. <laughs> yeah, it's... wait, why aren't we doing that? That is very, very far away. I think the the hmm. cost factor, because nuclear waste weighs a lot. <laughs> it's hmm. it's stuff in barrels. It's it weighs a lot. So to try and launch that into space, the amount of the amount of money it would cost. Just to launch a small amount of that nuclear waste. Well, let me ask you this: What's money? Uh, money, uh, cotton fibers, uh, <laughs> water oh, marks. Yes. Come on, it's a, uh, it's the thing we made up. That's what. It's the thing we made up. That's what funkism is all about. We get rid of money, <laughs> and we, we get rid of it. We buy stuff with dance. It's the root of all evil. Money. It's oh. also the root of all power and happiness in our planet. Mm, it's the it's the everything. People always say money doesn't buy happiness, and like I get what that was trying to mean, but it's also mm. like yeah, but money also kills a lot of the obstacles in the way of happiness. I think that things that make you unhappy and stressed are because of money. Like I feel like most people in the world are stressed or yeah unhappy because like 
oh, I don't like my job. I don't get paid enough for I can't afford rent. Why do I decide to um, eat instead of being able to go and out so, and get a steak dinner every day? If we eliminated money, I think that everybody would probably be happier. Mm. But also at the same time, why don't we just go back? I want to go back to trading for everything. Let's go back to the barter system. Let's return to monkey. Why not? I why think not? that that would be great. You have all, I mean, money at its core is just trading a thing for Oh, a yeah? Money's so evil, Ethan. Why don't you give all your money away? If you think uh, you'd be happier. I can't. I know. It's in a bank account. I know I would <laughs> be 100% less happy <laughs> if I had to give all of my money away. <laughs> I'm not going to sit here and pretend that money isn't amazing, okay? Money is fantastic. I Here's... One thing to counter all of that, video game. Yeah. Huh? Why movie? If money's so bad, why video game? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if money don't buy happiness, why game? Why game? The, the slogan should why? be, money doesn't solve every problem. Money doesn't solve yeah. emotional problems is the new version. There you go. Fixed it. Mm -hmm. We've money saved humanity already. We've fixed idioms. Let's do another mm. one. Uh-huh. Uh saved humanity. Um... Flattery hmm. is, uh, <laughs> imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, which is even the full quote. It's, yeah. the full quote is, <laughs> makes it sound so much worse. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> imitation is the best form of flattery, is that what you're thinking? Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, is the quote. But, uh -huh. it's actually, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery that mediocrity can pay to greatness. So... That's very different than, one of them is like, oh, you're imitating me, ha, huh, I'm so flattered. The other one is like, I'm so above you, you're mediocre. I am great. <laughs> Wait, why have I never heard the full quote Because before? people don't want to hear the full quote. They want to make themselves feel better about copying shit. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize that I've never heard the full quote before. Yeah, Damn, there's dude. a bunch of them out there. Oscar Wilde wrote That's that brutal. one. Uh, misquoted quotes. quotes. <laughs> <laughs> it misquoted idioms. This is just stuff that people say wrong. Like instead of saying nevertheless, they say never and less or things like that. People say never and less? Yeah. Or people say, I don't know if this is the wrong one or the right one because I actually don't know which is true now. For all intensive purposes. But a lot For all intents and purposes. Purposes. Yeah, but this one is for all intensive purposes. Is that the real? I, what? I actually don't know now. It's all intents for all, for all I intend to do and all of its purposes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Or like could care less. People say I'm like, oh, so you could care a little, dumb dumb. Yeah. What? Come what on. Are they, who's coming up with these? <laughs> I just said They're it. They're dumb dumb. Let's. Let's come up, let's come up with some new phrases. Ooh. Hmm? A new, a new way to talk about somebody. Man, or something that, or. that's like a Mississippi mud rattler. Uh-huh. And what does that mean? It means a snake in the grass, but they're really loud about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Um. What? Uh, uh, hold on. Just get get inspiration from around you. Take it from around you. All right. Here's the scenario. Right now, I'm hot. Okay. okay. I'm I'm warm okay. right now. Got it. I have a sweatshirt on, but I'm not taking it off. Ooh. I could fix my scenario, but I I am choosing to suffer. So in what's silence. what's your concise sentence for that? Well, that's what I'm asking. Because it's kind of like suffering in silence, which is already a thing. Yeah, but but uh, but this is like I'd I'm rather choosing. die hot. Then <laughs> live ugly. <laughs> <laughs> you either die hot or you live long enough to become <laughs> ugly. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's so true. That is true. Oh, man, that's true. Oh. <laughs> live hot <sighs> or put in effort. <laughs> live, live. Stew Hot. in your juices instead of bowing to circumstance. Stew in the juice instead of juice in the stew. 
<laughs> is that what you've simplified it down yep. to? <laughs> and then people will just say stew in the juice. I feel like modern vocabulary is just kind of like a math problem that you have to simplify. Yeah. You know, where it's like you need to break it down to its smallest See, form. That's, that's what modern vocabulary That's is. what Japanese culture does. Instead of convenience store, they say like konbini. Instead of Starbucks, they say staba. So they just shorten everything down. Very efficient. Very efficient. Like your name is Ethan Nestor. Uh-huh. Uh, that would be hard to fix. <laughs> to fix? <laughs> <laughs> Ethan Ness or something like that would be your name. Mine's Sean McLaughlin. Well, There's not a hope of anybody being able to get that shortened down. It's just no? not possible. Shama. Shama. That's actually good. That would work. Yeah. Would it? Shamala. <laughs> we are very close to M. Night Shamala. Shamala. Shamala ma ding dong. Whoa. Shamala. That would be mine. Oh, that's cool. I'm gonna make that's a new gamer cool. tag. Fuck Jacksepticeye, it's over. Jacksepticeye is dead and buried. <laughs> Spit on him. It's time it's for Shamala. Shamala. You could rebrand. Start anew. Oh, like Crank Gameplays went to Ethan Nestor. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly like Whole that. Whole new world. Uh, f what is it? Flattery? Something about flattery? Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery that mediocrity can pay to greatness. Yeah. Uh-huh. What he said. Yeah. Say it back to me. Here we go. Mediocrity. Wait. Here we since, go. Wait. Can't wait. Uh, wait. Working I've forgotten out, what the math first problem. word is. Don't math problem don't it out. Imitation is the greatest form of flag flattery. Flaggery. That media <laughs> that mediocrity can pay to can pay that mediocrity can pay to greatness. Yeah. Oh. Except you said greatness twice, which is bad English. It's the it? sincerest. Form of flattery. I oh. said it's the greatest form of flattery. Your English teacher would be very pissed. Oscar Wilde is mm. pissed. He's rolling Oscar in some grave Wilde. somewhere. He is. He absolutely when, is. When was Oscar Wilde? When was he coming up this shit? Coming up with this shit? I don't know. Who's coming up with all this stuff? He was... I uh, mean, I'm coming up with the, with the space Dyson. 1854 to 1900. Wow. Turn mm. of the century. He was like, I right. <laughs> Peace out. Bye, guys. Wait, what age was he? Is this going to be one of those things that is like, he actually died when he was 28. He was 46, of course. <laughs> What's the perfect age to die? Hmm. I'm going to go out what? hard I here. I mean, it's probably, I'm gonna go it's out probably different for everybody. I'm going to go out here with a hard 106. 106? You can't do anything. We've seen people. Your granddad, one of them, in their 90 plus years. Still yeah, scuttling around. Still doing shit. I remember seeing a video... On Reddit, where they got like his eighty-four-year-old granddad a Nerf gun, and he was walking around like shooting his wife with it. Man, and like that's fun. That? If you stay active, keep the mind going. You can, have you can get that? that worked out. Have you seen those videos of the guy doing Nerf gun battles with his kids, but he like flashbangs? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. It's so funny. A hundred and six. Because I think in your nineties, you can. Old. It's been proven by a lot of people that you can stay active and salient, if the genetics allow. After a hundred, then you're gonna the dust is starting to form inside the body, and I think a hundred and six by then you're probably like, that's good enough. You get to celebrate your hundreds, a little, which not many people get to do. Physical strength peaks at around twenty five years of age. <laughs> We have both oh. peaked. Oh. I am oh. on a decade after peaking. This sucks. The peak age to settle down is 26. The 37% rule of statistics says that at age 26, you'll have met enough people to have some solid options. Without waiting so long, they start pairing off without you. And according to one recent study, divorce rates are lowest for couples who are married between the ages of 28 and 32. Hmm. Whoa. This whole article is, is here are the ages at which you peak at everything Ooh. throughout life. I don't care about partnerships. I mean, I love Evelyn very much and she's great and I don't know what I would do <laughs> if she wasn't in my life, but I want to know what, when I peak like my vertical jump height. Okay. So what do you think the first age is for a peak and what do you think the thing is uh hair growth <laughs> incorrect so we've we've passed one two three four five 
six. I've passed six stages. You've passed seven, eight, nine, ten. Out of how many? Don't say ten. Nineteen. Oh, God. More than half. <laughs> I bet I haven't <laughs> peaked in sexiness, in financial growth, in well popularity. We'll, we'll find out. Okay. Can't wait we'll to have out. my midlife okay. crisis. <laughs> so, the, the first age that we peak is seven years old, which is learning a new language. Oh. Learning a second language is easiest when you're about seven or eight. Linguistics and psychologists are still very much arguing about this one. But it's commonly accepted that learning a second language is easier for most people when they are younger, genuinely, uh, genuinely, generally before hitting puberty. I think the first thing you ever peek at is peekaboo. And you play that before you can talk. This article is bullshit. Why is that not here? Where, when did I peek in peekaboo? Yeah. Uh, peekaboo, mm -hmm. I see you. Boom, peeked. I did this. I'm peeking. Look, I'm peeking right now. <laughs> Just gamer call out. He's peeking. <laughs> He's leaning. He's leaning. Q&E, &E. He's one shot. He's one shot. Okay. Second one. This one makes me a little bit sad. Uh, brain processing power. Oh, I fucking well aware that that's peaked a long time ago. 18. 18 years of age. On average, 18 year olds are f uh, fair best on the task. I okay. highly <laughs> disagree. I think in perfect circumstances, sure. Like your acuity and like your response times, especially for video gamers, we see all these youngsters who are like incredible. But let's face it, when it comes to other things in life, all the 18-year-olds out there listening to this are like, I'm supposed to be peaking, right? This is my peak? This is your peak of brain processing power. I think I. it depends Cognitive on how much tests. is coming in, because I didn't have a lot of input at 18. And now I have mm -hmm. so much going on that I feel like I'm more mentally prepared for anything and I'm more aware of more things. Mm. But that's probably due to other things, though. This is just like a cognitive test of, of <laughs> feeling, brain processing I feel like power. this fucking article peaked already. <laughs> All right. Hold on, the hold ability... On. Nice. The ability to crack open a cold one. <clears throat> <laughs> that peaked just now. <laughs> the ability to remember unfamiliar names, which this one makes sense because I can't remember anyone's fucking name, uh, peaks at around 22. Oh. I'm really good at names. I'm like that guy who Evelyn and all my friends always come to me and are like, well, maybe you don't come to me for this, but Evelyn definitely comes to me for this, where I just have a Wikipedia of like actors in my head. And then it's like, like who's that actor? Guy. And then I have to be like, okay, how would Evelyn know this person? <laughs> and I have to like backtrack. Mm. So I'm playing like Wikipedia in my head. Oh. I'm great with names and faces, but that's also ADHD. Yeah, I think it's a different kind, yeah. yeah. Because I can't remember anyone. And I haven't been tested for it yet, but my uh, psychiatrist did say that I could very well be autistic. That I ah, you should test I it. share a lot of very similar traits with the autism spectrum, which ADHD does in general. But she never suggested getting tested. Now I'm like, maybe I should get tested. Did she? Did she say like maybe you should check? check kind of. Out. She hinted that I'm probably autistic, but she huh. then never went any further on it. And I was like, okay. Let's deal with the ADHD first. <laughs> Cut to when you passed out taking a shit. <laughs> and you came downstairs. I need help. <laughs> my, uh, my, my language skills failed me on that day. Hey, I took a knock in the head, okay? That has nothing got to do with autism. That has got to do with me eating bad food. I can just picture like I know the way that, that you look when you wake up like everybody has like a certain way and I picture you waddling into the room with bed head no socks on just coming in on the tile I need help <laughs> you're not far off <laughs> all right at age 22 women are the most attractive to men and men seem to do better with age, apparently. Uh, that seems like more of a stereotype thing than anything. Like, how do you yeah. how do you gauge that 
accurately and quantitatively? I don't know. Let's read. The co the co-founder of OkCupid. Okay, okay, I don't care about that. According to the books analysts of the data, men really do find women in their early 20s most attractive. Even as they get over, older, their preference for young 20-somethings seems to stay the same. Women on they the just, site. They on just the canvassed other hand, Leonardo DiCaprio for this fucking quiz. Yeah. So they they just went through a dating website. So this is like. Eh, eh, eh. Yeah. Plus, there are so many women out there that age like such fine wine the older they get. Ah. Uh, <laughs> I was. I didn't have a joke lined up. I just made a noise. <laughs> no adjectives, no verbs, <laughs> no nouns, just ah. Ah. Uh, life satisfaction. A survey of 23,000 people in Germany found that 23-year-olds were particularly satisfied with their lives, all things considered. Yeah, but that's Germany. They're living in the UK, mm. America, living in, uh, well, I don't know, this, Korea. They didn't cover it all Living this. in China. It's all very different. It's all subjective. And, uh, strength peaks at 25, settled down at 26. We already did those. The average elite marathoner is 28 years old. I have Ooh. to run a marathon next year or I will never have the chance again. That's true. Although, who's the, is it Mo Farah? Who's the like crazy under two hour marathon runner? He's not fucking uh, 28. I don't know. According to, uh, to a 50 year old analysis of marathons, the average age to run and complete the race in just over two hours is 28 years old. Uh, bullshit. Mo Farah did it under two hours and he's 40. I, this is uh, an, this is an average. Uh, Mo Farah is forty. I just said it. <laughs> <laughs> Under two listening. hours, forty <laughs> years old. What's not making sense to you? Bone mass peaks around thirty. Your bones are at their strongest and densest when you're thirty years Dude, old. Dude, I could crack you in half. Your bones mm -hmm. aren't dense yet. Mm-hmm. Again, you can keep your calcium and vitamin D intake high to keep your bones healthier longer, but eventually they will start to weaken away. Wait, so here's the question. Here's the question. I've never broken a bone. 34 years old, under two hours, 40 years old. What up? So I'm approaching peak bone density. Yes. You are leaving peak bone density. Mm. Who has stronger bones? Are we just going to hit each other with baseball bats and see who <laughs> breaks first? <laughs> <laughs> no, because that's got to do with peak strength as well, which you also mm. have an edge on me with that. So mm. I'm just an old okay. man. This whole thing is just telling me how old and dusty and denseless I am. I need mm. dense bones again. And I don't go outside. And I live in England. I don't have any vitamin D to turn my calcium into bones. I, I started taking vitamin D supplements they haven't, I haven't taken them long enough to, for them to kick in yet, See, but my psychiatrist was like, everyone who's not a lifeguard is vitamin D sufficient. Deficient. Uh, deficient, yeah, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> lifeguards. <laughs> we don't know, it's an anomaly. As soon as you say you're a lifeguard, <laughs> vitamin D goes out of your body. I, goes, I take vitamin D all the time because I'm always on the lower spectrum of it. I got my blood tests done a while back. Cholesterol was a tiny bit high, hence why I'm trying to lose so much weight. Also, mm -hmm. vitamin D levels are always low. And so I started taking a supplement again for like the whole month. And I've taken it for like three months in a row before. I don't know what's any differences. No? I don't know what it's supposed to do. Make you feel happy. I don't know. Probably not. I don't know. It makes your vitamin D levels go up. <laughs> I don't know. Everyone in the comments, what? Are, what how are we supposed to be feeling? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I think vitamin D is the- Chess! Vitamin D is the only one that you're supposed to be taking. I think it's the only one that, unless you're going outside or staying outside all the time, I don't fucking know. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Moving on, please. Chess players peak at 31 years old. No one old. fucking cares about chess. I don't even know how to play chess. I don't care. <laughs> you're best at learning faces when you're 31 years old. Oh, I am good at faces, but again, <gasps> that's also the first ADHD. <laughs> The first one for you to approach, Sean. Here we go. Here we go. Nobel Nobel Prize winners make their big discovery around 40 years of age. Well, I have been spending a lot of time in the lab. <laughs> what you been working on? Oh, you'll find out when I'm 40. <laughs> Does it go... <laughs> you just make a vacuum? In <laughs> hey, in some holes, it makes that sound. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> 
Uh, women's salaries <laughs> peak at around 40, and men's peak at around 48. So you haven't peaked at salary yet, Sean. Wait, that's a weird statistic, though, because... We- <laughs> Women's salary peaks, but aren't men and women woefully unequally paid? Yeah, so uh, I don't know where we're getting this information from. According to an analysis by Payscale, women earn the most when they're 39 at a median of $60,000. That's partially because of women's salaries start growing more slowly at around 30. Men's salaries, and here's the wage disparity... Uh, peak when they're about 48 or 49 at a median closer to $95,000. Holy fuck, 35 grand more? Yeah. Oh, society's yep. fucked. At around 43, your ability to focus reaches its high point, so don't worry, you'll be able to have that attention span soon enough, Sean. I've still got a no, long way to go. This is under perfect scenarios. I have a lot of brain deficiencies that aren't helping. Ooh, understanding other people's emotions peaks in your 40s and 50s. Ooh, that's because you know who you <gasps> are by then. This is huge for both of us. Arithmetic skills peak at 50. I'll be able to do long division. There's still hope. I am going to go out here and say that I actually don't know what falls under arithmetic. Math? Well, I know oh, that math. part. What part of math? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> is that is a sure, like angles about your... and shapes and shit like that? Okay, I don't feel too bad because you don't have an answer straight out. The branch of mathematics dealing with the properties of manipulation of numbers. Uh, that's so, all uh, math. That's all math. <laughs> so I guess all math. Sure, you learned your times tables in elementary school, but it turns out fifty year olds are the best at answering arithmetic questions. Yeah, because they the probably fly. start doing puzzles. <laughs> They're approaching <laughs> retirement. And then they're like, well, time to bust out the math problems. Ready for this one? Life satisfaction peaks again at what age? 65. 69. Ooh. And I wonder why. Oh, everyone's going up and down on each other. (sighs) Woo, baby. Everybody's just like, hey, man. You know why it peaks at that? Because you're finally retired and you can finally spend the money that you've been whittling away at. And then you're like, shit, I, my bones don't work. The density of my bones are gone. It's time to just blow everyone all the time. <laughs> it's time to start fucking spooning. <laughs> Men and women feel best about their bodies after 70. Really? I don't know. If, maybe they just stop a, giving a shit. In a Gallup survey... I don't know. I guess that's... Is a, that a horse like, magazine? Place. <laughs> and they, they, the entire time they've been doing... They've been getting the numbers from horses <laughs> and their, like, relative age compared to humans. <laughs> in a Gallup survey, an incredible two-thirds of Americans over 65 said they always like the way they look. Men's self-perception uh, appears to peak in their early 80s. How is that true? When three quarters agree with the statement, you always feel good about your physical appearance. Women's rates of agreeing with the statement is a little below 70% as soon as they hit 75 years old. Hmm. I think because you're probably out of the the mulcher of life at that point. You're just retired, you're living happy, and you realize that work was part of the problem. Hanging out with other young people who also have insecurities is probably the problem. And then you just don't give a fuck. I don't want to sound like an asshole. But you're going to. I'm going to. There is a difference between liking the way you look (laughs) and being complacent about the way that you look. (laughs) That's what I'm saying. Because once you get older, you're probably like, I don't fucking care. That's what people always say. Oh, you got a tattoo? What do you think about when you're 70? And I'm like, I don't. I'm not going to care. If I care about how my body looks when I'm 70, I've done wrong things. Yeah. I'm going to be worried about if I'm incontinent. If I've shit the bed, if I'm going to die in 10 years, I'm not going to worry about ink in my skin. So now we get to the final two. People really do get wiser as they get older. A team of psychologists ask people to read about a conflict, then ask them questions about it. The scientists then analyze the responses uh, for characteristics like people being able to take someone else's point of view, anticipating change, considering multiple possible turnouts, acknowledging uncertainty, etc. They found out that the oldest group they studied, uh, people who are between 60 and 90 years old, did better than other ages on almost every account. Hmm. So people who are older were able to basically have more empathy. You just learn more. I guess so, yeah. 
And the final one, psychological well-being peaks at around 82. Oh, we have a long way to go. Mm -hmm. In a study published in the Proceedings of National Academy of Science, scientists asked people to picture a 10-step ladder with the best possible life on the top rung and the worst possible life on the bottom rung. Mm. The oldest group they studied, 82 to 85-year-olds, gave the highest average rung number, about seven. That's what we can hope for? The max psychological welfare that we can hope for is an average of seven out of ten? Oh, yes. And then, wait, there's one more thing. It says, people are likely to make big decisions, this makes sense, when their age ends in nine. There really is something daunting about approaching a round birthday. Mm. Researchers looking at people who are 29, 39, 49, or 59 found they were most likely to make a big life change, good or bad. Yeah. They found I that these nine enders were overrepresenting in groups of people seeking to have an affair, people committing suicide, and people running a marathon for the first time. <laughs> Those are all wildly different things. <laughs> I remember when I approached 10 years old, I was like, do I ditch Pokemon or do I keep going? I'm <laughs> or do big, I run a marathon? Big decision. Maybe I'll get divorced. I mean, it makes sense. <laughs> it makes sense. I'm hitting the big 10-0. Yeah. Maybe get divorced. <laughs> The big 10-0, baby. Oh, do you remember your 10th birthday? I don't. No. I remember like I don't my 7th. Seventh... birthday. Because my mom bought me a bunch of... She, I went home and it was like... I came home from school and there was a big box full of toys. And she had just bought them from like a Goodwill or like... They were all secondhand or somebody was like throwing out toys. So she probably spent a grand total of like £10 on it at the time. And... I didn't care because it was the greatest thing ever. I had so many new trucks and gadgets to play with. And I was like, this is the fucking greatest birthday ever. I have peaked. Yeah. I Where's the peak remember. on gifts? Christmas. Oh, the peak of when you receive things and it's exciting. Yeah. And when you're a kid and it's like, oh, you're getting like Harry Potter books and a video game and like, oh, a transformer. And now it's like socks and deodorant and sometimes nothing. <laughs> I, I don't know what age it was. It might have been around 10. This sounds like a 10-year-old birthday. Uh, I was so excited because my aunt was like, I'm going to set up your birthday party. What do you want to do? And I was like, I want to go go-karting. Oh. And she was like, all right, I'm going to make it happen. So for an afternoon, it was like an hour or something, she booked out a go-kart place, and I invited all my friends to come go-karting. I said, yeah. hey, come to this place at this time. We're going to go go-karting for my birthday. Only one showed up. My best boy from back home, Andrew. He was the only one. And not shockingly, he's the only friend that I went to school with that I still talk to at all. But wow. he and I are still best friends to this day because he came to whatever birthday that was. Hey. And we went go-karting. And we had a blast. It was just the two of us. If you asked, I'd go. Hey, man. Thanks. We should go go karting. We should you go been, karting. You you've been you've been going. I don't know. I how have, much but I'm bad at go karting. I remember we went and I was like doing it. We went one time together, and I remember doing oh, yeah. it, and I was like, "This is fun." And then I, after like four or five laps, I was like, "Okay, I'm starting to get it. I see the apex. I know what to do." Uh -huh. And then you passed me, and then mm -hmm. I had like a half a lap gap ahead of me by the end, and I was like. <laughs> What am I doing wrong? I was like, I thought I was going at the speed of light. There's more room for improvement. And then when you passed me, I realized that you're just a fucking lunatic in a go-kart. You were sliding around everything and you never took your foot off the pedal. <laughs> nah. Yeah, I just go all gas, no brakes, baby. Yeah. So much Nothing fun. but fucking gas. <laughs> Nothing but gas, baby. Yeah, that was fun. We should go again. We should go again. Also, speaking of go karts, sometime soon, the uh, Sean and I did a racing sim video. That's true for the brain leaks. We well, said it a couple soon. episodes ago, and I forgot to upload it. Yeah, it's uploaded now, though. It just has to await a thumbnail by you. Ah, okay. So I'll, get, I'll do the thumbnail. Do it. Maybe that'll be up by the time you listen to this episode. It'll be up by next episode for sure. Yeah. Also, when we do when this episode goes up. Actually, it'll be up by the time this episode goes up, not next episode. But <gasps> when this episode goes up, tomorrow will be my birthday. When this episode, it'll go up in the sixth. Up, 
or the seventh actually. So when people are watching it, it'll be my birthday. <sighs> what do you want for your birthday? Everyone to subscribe to Brain League. <laughs> oh my god, that's not yeah. really what I want for my birthday. I just want love. What do you really want for your birthday? Yeah, love, love, and oh. peace of mind, and a nice oh. cozy day. Oh. I don't need material that's things. Nice. Because I've basically you... bought everything that I want already and I'm impossible <laughs> to buy gifts for. Because I am, have an impulse. <laughs> what are you going to do on your birthday? We're going to go out for dinner. Because we've been like dieting all month. And then it's going to be like time to fucking blow this popsicle stand. Birthday bash, baby. Um, and no. then maybe just watch a movie in the movie room. Nice. I don't know what to watch though. Just a little cozy day. I think it's about cozy. movies to watch. Think about it. I don't know. What do you like hey. doing on your birthday? It's when you're a kid, it's like, I want everyone to come over and I want to celebrate with everybody and I want to have so much fun and do so many things. And as an adult, I'm like, I kind of want to just chill out and just not have to like work or like not have like a yeah. deadline for anything that day. I, I love, uh, I love a just going out for a nice dinner. Yeah. I love going out for dinner. It's one of my favorite things. One of my favorite things, especially if somebody else has a place that they really like mm. and they want to show me a, a place. I love that. Yeah, Where it's like I'd I'd love to take you to this place that I really enjoy. Yeah, and, and then it's, it's like, like, oh, what's good on the menu? And then you get to suggest yeah. things, and then they're mm -hmm. like, I'm vegan actually, and then you're like, oh, it, none of this <laughs> is good for you. Oh wait, I I I don't want it. <laughs> I want something else. Uh, when you said you were vegan, I heard I'm very good. How are you? Uh very good. How are you? There are actually some very good vegan spots in yeah. LA. There's a spot that has really good buffalo cauliflower. Ooh. That's fucking the place slaps. you brought me to? Yeah. Yeah, that buffalo cauliflower is pretty yeah. good. So fucking good. So fucking good. I love buffalo What's What's your favorite food? I was thinking about this the other day, what like your death row meal would be. Oh, man. I've seen those videos popping up on my... Recommended recently. Yeah, actually, of like this is your last meal. I don't know if my favorite food that I want to eat all the time would be my death row meal. Yeah, because I think my death row meal I want like a very decadent like garlic fries with like crazy sauces and then like a steak cooked to perfection. Mm. But my my everyday think, food that I want to eat all the time is just a really good burger. Do you think that when it's like okay, here's your last meal with somebody on death row? Do you think someone's ever sent it back? And be like, eh, it's it's actually not cooked. It's a little too rare for my liking. I I'm sure that's probably happened. If you can think about it, it's probably happened. <laughs> that's such a funny idea. Do you think anyone at Jesus's Last Supper was like oh, bread and wine again? Oh, God, I Jesus bet just they were admit, fucking done. Jesus, just admit you can't cook. <laughs> yeah, come on, Jesus. And he's like, oh God, Judas hasn't eaten anything. I wonder why. Do you think he's upset with me? Do you think he paid the bill? I don't think Jesus, Jesus ever paid a bill in his life. I think uh, he just performed a magic order. trick and then everyone went, <laughs> and then he, he like distracted as all the apostles walked out the back. Damn. He was Ooh, like, he... now for this magic trick, water into wine. And he was like, go, go, go. Do you th think that he was a dine and dasher? For sure. Jesus? He could, oh. he could walk on water. How are they ever going to catch him? He just sprinted <laughs> out across the ocean. And they were like, fuck. If he could turn water into wine, why didn't he make the whole ocean wine? Hmm? That would have been lit. Blood ocean. That would have been so sick, dude. <gasps> Is that what they're talking about with the Red Sea? Even though that was Moses? <laughs> yeah. Was the Red Sea red because Jesus turned it into wine? Yeah, he was like, watch this. And Moses was like, just let my people go. That's all I want. And he was like, no, no, why? it's going to be sick. No, 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 it's going to be lit. Yeah, you're going to love this. <laughs> like and he's like, just want my people to go. Mm -hmm. If you could split the ocean or something, that would be enough. It's like, okay, well, first, Red Sea. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> it's going to be so fucking dull. Dude, do you it's think Jesus could see the future? Or do you think God was like, because God can see the future, right? He's omnipotent. They're mm -hmm. omnipotent. I assume yeah. that has to come with some sort of future sight. Otherwise, what's the fucking point? Mm -hmm. But then he sent Jesus down. He was like, you can be my emissary. With none of the powers. Eh? Like, even, uh, even Jim Carrey and Bruce Almighty got more of the power than Jesus did. I feel like Jesus is kind of like a dad, or a, a kid who has a really rich dad, mm. but his dad won't actually buy him anything. Like, his dad's, like Tony, like, his dad's like Tony Soprano. Yeah. 
it's just like, man, he's got all this wealth and power and stuff, but he, he, you know, he's not buying me any cool toys. And it's like, how did it, I just finished watching all of Sopranos? So that's why it's fresh in my brain as an analogy. Mm. But it's it's also like that because all the stuff that Tony Soprano got is from like criminal activities. And let's face it, God has killed a lot of people. Like he, Cain and Abel, didn't he like mm. tell them to kill their sons and shit? Is that Cain I don't and know, Abel? I, didn't I go can't to church. I can't remember. I went to church, but they didn't tell us those stories. The priest just went on about whatever was happening in the news that week. <laughs> Which I'm like, oh, it would have been so cool to like hear the priest talk about Cain and Abel and all this like lore. Like there's so much God lore and he didn't tell us any of it. I could have been God theorizing lore. at home. Ah, oh, Matt Pat should do a fucking Jesus theory. Oh, did he walk oh. in water or... Was it like like Chris Angel, where it was like a pane of plexiglass underneath it, and he was like, "I'm walking on it." Look, damn, dude. There is a there is a I, book I think called about something about like the real Jesus, like what the actual person was like. Mm. I wonder if it's interesting or if it's like, oh man, this kind of sucks. <laughs> there weren't twelve sucks. apostles. He actually just had like four homies, but he just kept talking yeah. about how there was twelve of them. He made the water turn to wine, but it was really shit wine. <laughs> that fucking it clip. Good. He was like, oh, can you do a Ryoka or like a, <laughs> a Malbec or something? <laughs> That's so funny. That's the thought of Jesus making different kinds of <laughs> Yeah. Wines. And then he's like, ah, the loaves and the fishes. And he's like, well, I'm vegan and celiac, so... I can't really eat bread or fish. And Sorry, Jesus is man. like, Jesus then rolls his eyes and goes, God. And he's like, yes. He <laughs> <laughs> rolls his eyes and he goes, oh, Jesus. Or he just says, oh, me. Do you think that Jesus said his own name in vain? Dude, that'd be, that's kind of tight, actually. <laughs> if we like you get upset, doing it. that's so cool. Like bang your toe. Like, oh, fucking Ethan Nestor. That's so cool. Yeah. That's so cool. You need a three syllable thing though, or like four. Ethan Nestor fits in. But like banging your toe and saying Sean McLaughlin, like that that's fucked. I'm out of contention. I mean that's that's four. That's the same as Ethan Nestor. Sean Ethan McLaughlin. Nestor. That's true. Sean it just doesn't sound right. It doesn't sound good. Uh, Sean McLaughlin sounds like a name that you would uh, something that you would say when you sneeze. That's true. God bless you. Claude. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sean McLaughlin Ooh. sounds like the name of an Irish character in Harry Potter where she tried to come up with the most Irish sounding names. Actually, you know, that would be yes. Patty Fitzpatrick or something. I mean, she <laughs> called a fucking Finnegan guy Seamus. pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> Seamus Finnegan is... Yeah, really it's about... Funny. It's it's not as bad as Cho Chang, but they're all like oh. very on the fucking nose. Like, I'm sure there are people named Seamus Finnegan, but... Uh -huh. I have a little. You Do made you know a whole magical universe. What? Do you know anybody named Seamus? I did. There was a couple of a couple of Seamuses around the towns where I lived. Seamus. Seamus is actually, I think it's the Irish for James. James um, Finnegan. Seamus is just a Gaelic name. God, I can't wait for us to go to Ireland for Brain Lake Irish Week. Yeah, Seamus is James. So his name is James Finnegan. What's the Irish version of Ethan? I think it's like, no, I was going to say Eton, but I think that's, I had a girl in my class named Eton. Um, so I don't think it's Ethan. <laughs> that sounds like you're just saying my name in like a baby voice. Eton. <laughs> what is it? I was going to say Ana, but I don't think, I think that's Enda. What's the most like Irish Gaelic name? I mean, like Saoirse or... Seriously. Quiva or something like that. Qu Quiva. <laughs> Wait, how do you spell Quiva again? It's weird, right? Uh, Ethan is Aiton. Or I, I, I feel so bad. I don't know how to pronounce Irish names anymore. I've been out of practice for such a long time. People are going to be mad at me. I'm sorry. Um, Aiton. Quiva is C-A-O-I-M-H-E. So I'll spell it in. What? Yeah. C-A-O-I-M-H-E? Yep. That's Quiva? Mm-hmm. That's not right. It's just not right. And then... Maeve. 
Mave is M A M E A D B H. You can spell it that way, I think, but there's Whoa. there's also easier ways of spelling it. It's also confusing because a B H and an M H both kind of make like a V sound in Irish. It's a very strange is language, Nestor, but I I would love to learn it again. Is Nestor an Irish name? It sounds kind of Irish. I think it is because I think oh, it's Greek. I think oh. Greek th- derivation th- of Nomi, to go back, Nostus, one who returns from travels. I think my dad is a quarter Irish, which would make me an eighth, right? Yeah, sure. Or something like that. Americans are the only ones that, like, <laughs> say their <laughs> heritage in fractions like that. <laughs> like, once you start not being, like, half or quarter or something, everyone's like, eh, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> But Americans are like, I'm one eighth Irish, one twenty fourth Cherokee. Um, <laughs> it's like, are you? Are you really? Are you? Name one Irish thing that's not me. Okay, one Irish thing. The slang from last that's week. That's not you. That's not, the slang from last week. Wait, the slang. From last <laughs> you don't remember it? Clattered. That that did not come up last week. Okay, uh, Matt, uh, fairy. Fairy, fair. She, she's a fairy. Close. She, she's gone. She's going out with the fairies or something. She's away with the fairies. She's away with the fairies. <laughs> she's away with the fairies. <laughs> she's a fucking loser. What does that one mean? Like a fool. Oh, me mot. Yeah. Here we Not go. Not my mother. Not it, not although mother. that would make more sense. I'm going honestly. out with me mot. But are you guys going shopping or? Uh. Uh. Anyway, going wait, hold on. We're gonna we're gonna go going out with Mimon, and we're gonna. There was something with kissing, and I can't remember what mm-hmm. it is. What do you uh, What do you do in a car to change gears? Oh, and we're gonna be shifting. Yeah, <laughs> shifting with Mimon. Yeah, maybe they call it shifting because it's like a, a gear stick in your mouth. Both tongues are like gear sticks going around one another. Like, do you think anyone's ever kissed like that? And they're like first gear. Uh, second gear. Uh, uh. Uh, uh. Somebody was like, you know how to say if you want to do cunnilingus, like spell out the alphabet or something like that. Uh-huh. Maybe for Irish people, they were like, lad, just get in her mouth and then pretend you're going through all the gears over and over again and then go backwards. Uh, 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 but like really quick. Uh, and Seamus, for the love of God, stop making started. the sound whenever you're kissing her. <laughs> 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 Uh, and then, hey, oh, sorry, I downshifted. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's what they call going down on each other, downshifting. <laughs> Ooh, downshifting. Oh, that's, that's excellent. Take that, oh. Ireland. Well, should we wrap it up here? We should wrap it up like a cat in a blanket. We uh, should also encourage everybody to leave some birthday comments for Sean. Yeah, and not just happy birthday. Like, get crazy with it. Get leaky with it. I'm so sick of yeah. that. Happy birthday, have a good one. Like, it's mm-hmm. nice that you're thinking of me. That's great, I'll accept it over nothing. But, you know, I'm giving you free will to just do whatever you want. Do something creative. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Something cool. Happy leak day is even better. Ooh. Yeah. Leave, leave, I want an MLA formatted essay. Birthday essay for Sean. I don't know comments. what MLA is. It's a, it's a way that a paper is formatted. <laughs> what does it mean? I don't remember. <laughs> you don't remember or you <laughs> don't know? I can't remember. Okay. I did. I knew at one point. So what's the difference? Though? Major league academics. What? Probably. What? What is the difference between not knowing and not remembering? It's the same thing at the end of the day. I don't remember. I don't know. I knew once, but I don't know anymore. It's better to have known and forgotten than to never have known at all. So true, King. So anyway. True. Thank you guys for watching. Go subscribe. Go follow. Go do I whatever you do with podcasts in any place. Yeah. It's different Share everywhere. with your friends. Yeah. Say, hey, Listen with a friend. Become a leaker. Yeah. Tell us what how your many, favorite month is. Just go nuts. <laughs> how many how many new leakers can we get in 2024? Yeah. Hmm? How many teeth do you have? Yeah. Let us know. Anyway, All thank right. you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Brain leak. <laughs>